everybody. This is Hammer Striker here. We managed to get our paws on the long-awaited Colt Cobra. It's a restart of the original Cobra, but it's not just a churning out the original spec. They've actually gone through and modernized it in a few different ways and made what actually turns out to be a very nice 38 special six round revolver. So let me pick the critter up, show you that it's clear, and tell you a few things about it. Start with, we do have an empty revolver. And like the original Cobra, the release on this one, it pulls back, which is a little different than the Ruger and Smith and Wessons where you either push down or push forward. And when you first look at it, it may be counterintuitive, but when you actually use it, it's actually really easy to use. You just kind of, you can actually even with a firing grip, reach up and release it. It's easy to get a hold of. There's some serrations on it, and it can feel just a hair sharp if you drag your finger across it but it's real easy to get your finger in there and get a hold of it. So it releases very nicely. And one thing I've noticed about this revolver is everything operates smoothly. The cylinder going into place, the release, it operates smoothly, and the cylinder popping out. It's a well-machined, very refined revolver. The Hogue Overmold Rubber Grip actually gives you a full three-finger grip, eh, three, two and three-quarters maybe, and is really comfortable. Your top finger sits right into that well, which is kind of flattened out just in front of the trigger guard, and your everything you touch is rubber. And it's got a little bit of a swell there, you see, to fit your palm a little more nicely. So holding it just here, sitting at the table, and also at the range, was quite comfortable. It was easy to keep control over. It is 38 special, but even shooting plus P rounds through, which it is rated for, was very comfortable at the range and very controllable. The sights on this gun, it's a gutter and a front fiber optic red sight. Now normally I'm not really a fan of gutter sights, but on this particular revolver it's actually very, very easy to see. It's well defined, the red dot stands out. If I have the hammer back, which is the position you might have it in if you have it in single action mode, it's really clear and easy to get through. We really didn't have any trouble getting this thing on target, lining up the sights, and using them. So unlike a lot of gutter sights which are shallow or poorly defined, these are real crisp and easy to use. And the front sight has a little hex nut on it that you could replace the front sight with a different one if you chose to, uh, possibly a different color or a different style. But you might not be inclined to with that red easy to see dot. You might just want to stick with the factory sights as they come with it. As I mentioned, it does hold six rounds. It's 7.2 inches from front to back, 4.9 inches tall, and 1.4 inches at its thickest, which of course would be the cylinder in this case. And, you know, that's actually not a very big gun when you consider it to many of the other, you know, pocket pistols. It's a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier than some of the smallest ones, like the other you know, Ruger LCP. But when you compare it to, say, a Glock 43, it's only an ounce or two heavier and it's not a lot larger than many of its competitors. So it is a very viable concealed carry gun. It's comfortable enough to enjoy at the range, and it would also make a good nightstand home defense gun. As you can see here, it's got a full lug, so it get, it's very well balanced. One thing I noticed when I was holding on to it is, you know, it's very well balanced. I've just got one finger basically on it. I got one on the side of it, and it's pretty much staying put, even without the finger on the side of it. It's staying put. So it's a nicely balanced revolver. Of course, it'd be a little bit more nose heavy when it's full of ammo. But I didn't find at any point that it felt bulky. It felt like it wanted to tip. The uh, safety on this is a transfer bar, which you can see it right there. And if I uh, lower the hammer, I'll pull the trigger and lower the hammer, you'll see as the hammer goes down, the transfer bar moves out of the way. So it is very safe and you can carry this revolver safely and hammer down on a live round. There's no way the hammer can reach the round. So that it's, it's definitely a safe to carry revolver. The trigger on this thing is very, very nice. So we'll start with double action. Of course, you know, we, again, we do have an unloaded revolver. So in double action mode, I'm gonna do it once just to, set, to reset it. It comes in at seven to eight pounds and it's very, very smooth. It really doesn't feel like it's seven to eight pounds. Now I stopped right here. There's just a hair of stacking at the end, just before the break. 
but it's not enough to throw you off your game or disturb you. So I'll show you that again, all the way out. Very, very smooth. Right here, just a hair, hint of snacking, stacking, and then it broke. Single action mode is awesome. This is the entire break, from there to there. That's the whole break. I barely moved my finger. It's rated three to four pounds, and that's what I tried, you know, when I tested it, I tested it right at three to four pounds. It feels a lot lighter than that. I think that it's so short, it's almost impossible to realize that it's broken time to stop putting pressure on the gauge. And it comes in, you know, it's going to read higher than it really is. I'm going to show you that again. From there to there. You almost don't see the trigger move. And then it stops. There's not a lot of over travel. So it has an awesome single action trigger and a very, very nice double action trigger. And we found that at the range, trying to shoot this either double or single action, it was very easy to stay on target. As you're pulling the trigger, you didn't have a tendency to curl your hand or adjust your grip. It just was, it was a fun at the range. And I think in a self-defense situation, you know, as you just kind of yank the trigger back, you're going to be able to keep the gun perfectly straight and get the job done. Overall, I really do enjoy this revolver. One of the things I can only hope is that it's the beginning of the revival of the Snake series. So this is the Cobra. You know, they historically had a King Cobra, a Python, and an Anaconda. I would love it if they are actually planning on resurrecting that line. Uh, who wouldn't want to get their hands on a Python or an Anaconda? A few of the things I'll show you just from a comparison standpoint is I've got a Ruger SP-101 here, which is unloaded. This is about a half an ounce to an ounce heavier. This is only holds five, but this one is 357 Magnum. But you'll see they're roughly the same size. When I pack them up next to each other and put the cylinder in on it, when I set them up next to each other, they come in right about the same size. And again, the Ruger's just a hair heavier. This is a stainless steel body, stainless steel frame, but it doesn't feel it. It feels a lot lighter than that. From a thickness perspective, they're very similar. So this is competitive from a size perspective with many of the other concealed carry revolvers that are out on the market today. In fact, it even fits the uh, Nemesis pocket holster, which is an N3. So it hits, fits the same pocket holster that the SP-101 does. These DeSantis Nemesis pocket holsters are really nice, and if you're going to carry this thing in a pocket or a purse, you know it, it keeps the trigger covered and uh, out of the way. For uh, accessories, there's going to be quite a few accessories that are going to come out very shortly uh, because it, it does share some of the characteristics of like the Detective Special and the original Colt. For example, this HKS speed loader that I've got right here will work with it. And this also for the Detective Special, the Cobra, the Agent. So because it's very similar to some of the other revolvers in their series, there's already a lot of accessories out there. And I'm sure that if this can, takes off in the popularity that it probably will, there'll be quite a few more uh, you know, accessories available. The only thing that somebody might consider a negative on this is that many of the parts are MIM, uh, metal injected molding. That really isn't the negative that it used to be. In the past, that process often resulted in weaker metals, but the process itself has been refined to the point where MIM can produce parts that are every bit as good as forged or cast or any of the other production methods. So if you hear that, don't let that stop you. Basically, it should hold up as well as any other revolver on the market. And being stainless steel, it should be resistant to rusting, you know, especially if it's up against your body or in you know, adverse conditions. So overall, I've enjoyed this revolver in the time that we've had it. These are relatively new on the market. They're going to MSRP around $699. Right now, you're going to pay more than that. The few people that have them know what they've got. But once they get mass production and they get going, you, know, you should be able to get them for probably under that probably around 649 ish maybe less, depending on what's going on. So if you want one today, you're going to pay a little more. Once they're out, you know, you probably will be able to get these at a fair price, very similar to any of the other revolvers out there. So overall, it's a winner. I like this revolver, and I would recommend it. If you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, check us out on Facebook, and have a great day. Thank you.